Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. Good to see y'all this morning, and we're glad you're here on a Christmas Eve, right? And I hope that uh, I hope we all have a wonderful Christmas. I hope we all focus on the true meaning of Christmas. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Nope. That was weak. Y'all awake this morning? Let's stand together, okay? And his name is Jesus. There we go. All right. Very good. All right. Let's sing this this morning together. The
Hello. Everybody says I talk loud, so y'all gonna bear with me. Uh, good to see everybody here today. Um, let's do our announcements. Hot apple cider after morning service today. Who all likes that? Did everybody like that? Everybody? Good stuff. Uh, Freedom Seeker is doing a special service New Year's Eve at 6 p.m. There will be music, testimonies, and food. Make plans to be here for a uh, very special night. So thank you, Steve and Jen, for doing that and cooking. You what are we having? You have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to have some uh, deer meat and some Boston butts, I think. Yeah. And dessert. And some dessert. And if anybody wants to bring something, just let them know. Do they need to bring something? If y'all want to. If you, if you want to, you don't have to. Yeah, I think we got enough, but yeah. it's never enough when <laughs> Byron's <right>. around. <laughs> <laughs> um, so y'all come out and join that. Uh, we are updating our records. We need all members to fill out another membership form, please. Like I said, they're back there in the foyer. Uh, Freedom Seekers meet Monday night at 6 p.m. Are y'all meeting this Monday? See? No, because it's Christmas. No, no Freedom Seekers this Monday night. Tomorrow, it's Christmas. Uh, at 6.15 on Sunday mornings, we have classes for men and women. And... 9.15. Oh, 9.15. <laughs> and uh, Miss Deb didn't get the memo this morning. She showed up here three times. She said... <laughs> She's dedicated, so thank you. That's the inspiration for all of us, you know. Uh, adults, children, and teen classes on Wednesday evenings, and they're looking for volunteers. They're still looking for volunteers, probably. So if you want to volunteer for that and help out, they would appreciate it. Uh, Kylie DeVries is collecting food items for the backpack program at the school. Uh, thank you, Kylie, for doing that. And if y'all want to help out with that, there's a tote in the foyer. Y'all just bring it up here. And there's also a list of things you can bring back there and just set it in that tote. And my verse for today is um, out of John 1, 29. It says, And the next day John said, Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which is take away the sins of the whole world. Amen. And we need to, you know, thank Jesus for that. Because, you know, we're all sinful people. And we needed somebody to do that. And Jesus loves us so much, he sent his only son to do that. So we just uh, thank him for doing that. Because if it wasn't for that, you know, we'd be in trouble. And there's so much other stuff that that you can read on Jesus of who he is, but that's one of the main ones, you know, that takes away the sins of the world, you know, because this world's full of them. But you had to come to him and accept him, you know, to be his son. So if you don't know Jesus today, no better day than today to accept him as your savior. Amen. And Adam Farmer's doing a special, and I thank Carly and um, uh, Skyler <laughs> to do a special. And after them, Adam, you still, you're not going to do it? Okay. Adam's out.
So I just wanted to share something with y'all real quick. Um, yesterday I was out with family, not um, un, you know like any other time in the Christmas season, but we were, we just stopped and got something to eat, and we were sitting there visiting, and um, and just in conversation, part of my testimony came up. Part that I think a lot of times everybody knows about me, especially the people that are close to me and I spend time with. And um, they were just shocked and they stopped and listened and asked questions. So I, I just wanted to share that, um, you know, the Lord says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You never know when the smallest thing that you say will spark a conversation. And sometimes the things that you that are just normal to you or you just forget what you've talked about and what you haven't. And so during this holiday season, you know, a lot of times I will think back to the moment when God saved me and that's a special time and I can look back and see all these roads, but really the real hope came at Christmas, you know. At, at that time, he came, and he was there, and then he died on the cross, and from that moment on, everything in history changed. Yes. So if you have somebody in your family that you know they're, they're not going the right way and you worry about them, just share your story. Don't worry so much about all the other things. The Holy Spirit will bring things to mind, but just share your life, share your love, Share your Savior, right, in a real and practical way. It, it's not that hard to be a witness. And then pray and thank the Lord that it's the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And you're going to overcome through those things. Man, we think about Christmas and we think about Mary and, and wonder, you just wonder, this song really speaks of what did she know? So listen to the words of this and we try to sing it this morning. Mary, 
really did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is seven perfect man? Sleep in child, your old is a great child who was sent. This morning I want you to turn in your Bibles to look at Romans. Romans chapter 5. Starting in verse 8. And I really want to preach this morning on the theology of Christmas. I know we have opportunities. A lot of times we'll just kind of read the nativity story. But uh, I, want to re- I want us to realize this morning that Jesus came and that child was born so that he would go to the cross. And he would die for your sins and my sins. And while the wise men brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, Jesus himself was the greatest gift that God has ever given us. He's the greatest gift you could ever receive. But he's a gift to be received. I want us to understand this morning, just because God has offered a gift, doesn't mean we have to receive that gift. You know, I know a few years ago I had a friend of mine who was having some issues with a with a, a family member, and the family member showed up to their house and 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 gave them this gift and tried to reconcile. And they said, "No," they said, "I don't, I don't want your gift." And they and they they just left it there and set it out on the front porch, and they eventually picked it up, brought it inside, just set it over to the the corner and. And uh, and didn't didn't touch it, didn't open it, didn't receive it. And time went on, and Christmas just came and went, and that present ended up in a closet. And, and then that family member died, and, and that person went to the closet and, and pulled that gift out. And thought, you know, they're gone now. I, I'm gonna. I wonder what it was that they that they gave me. And they opened up a gift that was so apologetic, and and really would have fixed the issues that they had with that person. And yet it was too late to to really reconcile that relationship. Listen, don't wait to die and stand before God and think that somehow you're going to be able to open the gift then or receive the gift then. You must receive Jesus today. Right? Today is is always the only time we ever have. Anybody that receives Jesus does it today. They do it on a day. Nobody receives him tomorrow. Nobody can go back in time and receive him uh, yesterday. Each moment that someone receives Christ is in that moment they receive him. And the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So if you're here and you don't know that you know that you know that you know him, man, don't leave here. Don't miss Christmas because truly without him, you, you never fully experience what Christmas is all about. In Romans chapter 5, Paul begins to write and he says, But God commendeth his love, verse 8, toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, the Bible tells us that God loved the world so much that he gave. One of the things we do at Christmas season is we give. We give gifts. Uh, as a, I believe one representative of the gift that God gave in his son, Jesus was also at that Christmas and the wise men brought those gifts and they, they passed those gifts out. And so one of the blessings is we get the opportunity to, to, uh, to give gifts out. And a lot of folks will do the, you know, I'm one of these folks that uh, I like to go and find something 
that I'm still kind of old school. I'm either going to go to a store or I'm going to get online and I'm going to look for something that I feel like that person that I'm buying for is going to like. <laughs> something that they're going to open up and go, oh, cool, right? And, and so, you know, something that is made for them. That is that, And for some people, that may be a gift card, right? You know that the thing that's going to excite that person is a gift card to Lowe's. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That may be the thing that I mean. If they get that, buddy, they're liable to run around the tree, right, and celebrate. <laughs> but however it is that you do that, you, you know, you, we do this, and we see joy, and it's such a, a blessing to see joy uh, when they open the gift up. I got to see my mom cry this year when she opened the gift up from kind of all of us. And that was such a blessing. And I wanted to say, and I didn't stop her from crying because I knew it was tears of joy. But I was like, we did, we, I wanted to jump in and say, we bought that to make you happy, not make you cry, you know. But it was overwhelming. And she cried when she received that gift. And it blessed all of us as much as it blessed her to watch her receive that gift. God has sent his son to be the greatest gift that we could ever receive. We don't deserve the gift. The Bible says here that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not because of any good that we did, but just because God loves us. While we were yet sinners, while we were doing what we wanted to do, when we, before we ever came to accept Him, Jesus loved us enough, knowing that we would rebel, knowing that we would sin, and yet He loved us enough to, to die for us and give us just an unspeakable, wonderful Gift, the greatest gift to ever be received, which is the gift of himself. But much more, it says, then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, Andrea mentioned a few minutes ago that, you know, in her testimony, what opportunity we have at Christmas time. Look, it's Christmas, right? Christ. We don't have, I mean, I feel like a lot of times as Christians, we, we don't take this grand opportunity God has given us during this season to share the love of Jesus with people, to share the good news. I mean, there are people who celebrate Christmas who don't know Christ. And a lot of Christians sit back and bah humbug, and well, I'm going, you know, Christmas. Every year I start getting the text, you know, you know Christmas once was a pagan holiday. I'm like, you know, I don't care what it was. Right? By the way, there's a lot of argumentation that that history is actually not true, that they were celebrating Christmas uh, on the 25th of December before the things that they all throw out there. You know, that you've got to do this. Do Listen, I want you to know this. We, we fail to take the opportunity during Christmas time, oftentimes, to let people know, hey, yes, there's all this celebration. There's lights. There's family get-togethers. There's time off work. There's, there's all this stuff. And, but beyond that, do you know the real meaning of Christmas? And I want you to know there are people out there who don't know the real meaning. And how will they know unless the people who do know tell them? Right? So some of us are going to get together with family tonight and tomorrow. And, and we're going to eat food and we're going to laugh and we're going to talk about past Christmases and memories. And we may play games together. Whatever we're doing, don't miss the opportunity in the midst of all that, that God has given you to, to, to pray, right? Man, what opportunity that is. And when you gather together, hey, would you mind if I pray before we eat? Amen. Amen? Yeah. And there could be people there that have never heard the gospel who don't know the Lord. But you can pray to Jesus. And you can share even as you pray, right? You can pray and thank the Lord for the gift of salvation that he's given us and for sending his son Jesus to come to this earth, this a, a truly a child who was born to die for you and me. Don't miss that opportunity. Look, if we miss that opportunity, again, we really miss Christmas. And I know a lot of people are saying this year, it just doesn't feel like Christmas to me this year. I don't know how many people have told me that this year. I felt that my way uh, myself a little bit. That just, it's, you know, when it's 60 something degrees outside and, and you got short sleeves on and you're, you know, and just, you know, it's just to just the state of the world right now, just the, the conflicts around the world and so much is happening. And so many just kind of like, man, you know, I just, just haven't felt like it. Well, listen, you don't have to get the Christmas spirit. If you've got the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. It's far more important to have the Holy Spirit indwelling you than it is to have some intangible thing that we call, quote unquote, the Christian spirit, whatever, whatever that means. Listen, the child of God can celebrate Christmas every day of the year. Amen. Every day of the year we can celebrate the coming of Jesus into the world and what he did for us. Amen. And so, look, don't let the, the, the things and the state of the world and the attitudes of other people and all that uh, drag you down. Uh, this is a time to rejoice. This is a time to share the good news of Jesus with others. This is a time to rejoice for he has come. And he is coming again. Amen. Well, as we look at this, we see, you know, we've been justified by his blood. We'll be saved from wrath right through him. Look, guys, we, we were bound for hell, but because of Jesus, he sets us free. We don't have to face the wrath that is to come because we've been forgiven of every sin. Man, what an awesome thing to have a record that was, was covered with offenses and get in a record that says, I see no offense. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to guarantee you right now, if you're somebody, if you were somebody who broke multiple laws and you had a rap sheet and for Christmas somebody sent you uh, a rap sheet that had been totally cleared, I want you to know something. You'd be excited about yeah. that. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Say so you've got a, a looming court date and, and all this stuff and you're, you're, you're dreading that day to come and you've got this list of offenses that you've committed that you're going to have to deal with on that day and all of a sudden imagine a letter comes that says you've been pardoned. Amen. Amen. You've been cleared of every offense. That's what Jesus has done for us. And that we would one day stand before God with a list of offenses that we could not uh, stand in that day. That we would, we, would, we would not be able to stand on that day. That we'd be cast into hell itself. And yet, because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us, and uh, his death and his burial and his resurrection, because of Jesus, listen, we, we can go to heaven because he has cleared us. Amen. Amen. He has pardoned those who have come to accept him. He goes on and says, for well, while we were enemies... And we were enemies of God. Without Christ, our sin puts us at opposition with God. But it says we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. So listen, he, he's the only one who could die uh, and take on the sins of others because he had a true spotless record. And man, when I accept him, guess what? His record becomes my record. Amen. Wow. I mean, that's amazing, right? I don't deserve that, right? And by the way, I can't earn that. No amount of church going or baptism or prayers prayed or, or, or denominations joined or, or, or positions held or money given or anything else. Listen, none of those things can give me a, a centimeter closer to heaven. But boy, when I look at what Jesus did on the cross, Amen. and I see he died for me, and I say, see that he descended for me, and I see that he rose on the third day for me, conquering death, hell, and the grave, and I see that the Bible tells me in Romans that it, those who will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, they shall be saved. And then it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When I see that, woo, Amen. I take a hold of that. Amen? And I can rejoice. Even if there's nothing under the tree, I can rejoice. Because there was one who hung on the tree. For me and for you. Amen. Amen. Even if there's nothing under the tree, even if, if everything seems to be going wrong, we can still praise God because of who he is and what he's done on our behalf. He says we were enemies, but we've been reconciled. Listen, Christmas is a great time to reconcile with God, and it's a good time to reconcile with others, isn't it? In fact, the Bible says that we've been given a spirit of reconciliation as Christians. 
Firstly, that we are too, because we've been reconciled with God. We can help, help others find reconciliation with God. We can help others come to Christ. But also, we have the way that we're to be peacemakers, right? We're to be called to be peacemakers. And so, we are to work to reconcile family, reconcile friends. And especially, listen, if we've held all against a brother in Christ, or if we held helped unforgiveness against a family member or a friend, Christmas is a good time, listen, to do what we can do. Now, we can't make anybody forgive us, and we can't make anybody else reconcile, but we can do our part in trying to reconcile relationships and heal them. And guys, I want you to know this. Some of the best Christmases I've ever seen is as a result of people reconciling. Amen? That might be a married couple who's been at each other and they reconcile. Might be a, a child who comes home for Christmas and reconciles. That might be a, just good friends who had something happen that came between them and they reconcile. Listen, reconciliation is one of the, the greatest blessings that God can bring into our lives. And we've been given that ministry of reconciliation through Christ. We've been reconciled to God by the death of His Son much more. Being reconciled, we should be saved. By his life. And not only so, but we also join in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. There's that word received. You see, we have the joy, and we sing the song, Joy to the World, the Lord is come, the earth receiver king. We sing that song. Listen, Jesus he truly does bring joy into our life, doesn't he? He truly does. Listen, Jesus, there can be moments where we are so down. And, and a song of joy comes. When I was listening to just the song, Mary, did you know, and getting ready to, to try to sing that this morning, and I listen to that message, and I think, wow, if he can do all that, he can get me involved in my situation. Amen. If he can raise the dead, if he can open blinded eyes, if he can cause the, those that, that were lame to walk again, if he can cause those deaf to hear, if he can cause those that could not speak to speak, then surely I can give him praise for the issues of life I face. Surely he can intervene in my situation. Surely he can bring reconciliation. Surely he can work in my life. Amen. A lot of the things that I'm facing in my life, the things that get me down, are nothing compared to what those pronounce, that, that, that he would walk on water. Amen. He can do that. Oh, he can deal with my issues that I have in life. Amen. We have a God who is all-powerful. We have a God who not only though is all-powerful, but he is also a God who loves us. Mm -hmm. He's a God who has all power, but he's also a God who's good. Yeah. Amen. It'd be one thing to be all-powerful and be bad. But our God is good. He uses the power that he has to bless and to save and to help and to deliver right. Man, I pray this year for drug addicts to come running home to their families and to be delivered, right? I pray that as we get ready to end this year and, and start a new year, that, that the Lord would use the season of Christmas and he would use his people in this season of Christmas to let those that are out there and are bound up know that there is a freedom that can come in Jesus that brings joy unspeakable and full of glory and that they can enter into a new year listen, with, with the old year past. No matter what had happened in that year, that God has put it behind them. Amen. And step into this next year and this next season of life Amen. in a different way, in a different season. Therefore, wherefore is by one man sin into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men for all his sin. You see, because of what Adam did in the garden and his failure, sin has been passed on. A sin nature has been passed on to every man. Listen, Adam failed in the garden, but Jesus did not fail. Amen. Jesus overcame. Adam partook, and because of that, we inherit that sin nature, and we, we sin because we have it in our nature to sin. Yep. It doesn't take a child very long to learn how to sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I've seen some, I've seen some, some uh, toddlers that if they were about seven foot tall, they'd have tore your head off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because of the anger over a toy. You took their toy. If they had the strength to, I'm telling you, they'd rip your head off. Amen? I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Our sin has to be 
dealt with. We, we have to, as Christians, we have to, as parents, we have to instruct children in the right way. We, this idea of today where parents say, well, I'm just going to let my kid just grow up and do whatever they want, be whatever they want. No, listen, God has called us to train up our child in how they should go so that when they're old, they'll not depart from it. We're called to instill biblical values into their life. Not just to let them, let, you know, because here's the thing, guys. If, if, if we don't train them up in the ways of God, the world will train them up in other ways. Right? So we've got a calling on our lives to teach our kids. Listen, thankful you know, if you're able to buy presents for your kids and you're able to bless them. With, but, you know, the greatest thing you can give your kids this year is to give them Jesus. Show them Jesus in your life. Let them see Jesus uh, reflected in how you live and not what just, just what you say, which you should say those things, but also to live that out before them. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there's no law. In other words, the law let us know. While sin was rampant, the law lets us know what sin is and how it has offended God. Uh, Paul says that the, the law was like a schoolmaster. <laughs> Showing us how sinful we really are, right? When I, I can sit down with kids, I've done this just in the last couple weeks, and I would look at a child and say, hey, who come to me asking me about wanting to be saved? And I say to them, hey, well, you, are you a sinner? And I've had some look at me and say, well, I don't know what that means. And then I say, well, have you ever told a lie? All of a sudden, they know what a sinner is. Because <laughs> they go, uh, yeah. And then I'll say, have you ever taken something one year from your from your brother and sister, or from, uh, well, I gave it back. Well, yeah, but you took it without permission, didn't you? Ooh. Well, here's, here's where I really get them. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. Have you ever dishonored your father and mother? Have you ever, have they ever told you to do something and you just got mad about it and you wouldn't do it? You, oh, uh oh. That's only three of the ten. I could keep going. Amen? Here's the reality. We've broken God's law. Even if we didn't know it was God's law, we've broken it. Because that sin nature is in us. And so God gives the law to reveal to us that we are sinners and we're in need of a Savior. The law is given so that we know and recognize that, hey, we're guilty before God. And we need somebody to deliver us and set us free. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. In other words, they didn't do exactly what Adam did, but the nature is still the same. And by the way, can I tell you something? People will look at Adam and Eve and go, oh, I would have never done that. Yeah, you would have. You'd have fell for it. You know how I know that? Because you fall for stuff the devil brings at you today, don't you? Right? In your life, you live, you fall for some of his wiles. Well, he tricked them. And they fell, and they sinned, and we sinned. Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the, look at this, I love this, the free gift. Amen. The free gift. For if through the offense of, of one, many be dead, much more. The grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. In other words, Adam brought sin in that would affect every man. But when Jesus went to the cross and rose from the dead, he makes the opportunity given to every man Amen. to be saved. Amen. Every man, woman, boy, and child have the opportunity to come to Jesus. And be forgiven of their sins. Amen. Guys, Jesus' blood is enough to wash away the sins of every person that's ever lived on this earth. There's no limit in the power that he gives. Only in that we must receive it. Accept it. Make it ours. Right? Now, it's a free gift. Now, what does that mean? I looked, by the way, and I said this from, I looked up the word free in the Greek. And it means free. <laughs> right? Now, when you think of something that's free, I, by the way, if you're, especially if you're a parent, 
You love the word free. You got several kids, and you go to a restaurant, and it says, kids under 12 eat free, right? That becomes suddenly your favorite restaurant. In fact. Amen. Because you're like, okay. By the way, there's not a lot of things out there that, that, that are free these days, right? In fact, there's nothing that's actually totally free. Anything that's free had to be paid for by somebody. So here's the thing. It can be free to you, but somebody else has to pay for it, right? When, so when, when, when our government gets up and says, we're going to give away free college to everybody. Uh, no, somebody's going to pay the salary of the professors and, and all this kind of stuff. Somebody, probably somebody that didn't go to college will end up paying for it, right? Okay? So here's the thing. It's, salvation is free to us. But it costs something. It costs more than, than any amount of money the world could ever put together. Was it because it cost Jesus to step out of the, off the throne of heaven and come to this earth and live a life that he would be rejected, that he would be spat upon, that they would turn on him, that some of his closest friends would betray him, that Others of his closest friends would, would walk away from him in his darkest hour and, and go uh, running from him. And, and, and all these things that he would face the cross with only his mother and a few others there standing there. And yet he could have called on a legion of angels to come and receive him off of that cross and that he would not have died. But because of his great love for you and me, he stayed upon the cross until he took his final breath and said, it is finished. Before that, he said, Father, forgive them. Right. They know not what they do. Right. Mm -hmm. That's love. Amen. There's, there's no greater love than a man would lay himself down for his friends. Amen. Jesus said that in John chapter 15. And he said, I don't just, he said, I call you my friends. He calls us his friends. He calls us his brothers and sisters. That's not Jesus. That's the love he has for us. Listen, we have a free gift in the grace of God that has been paid for by one man, Jesus Christ, and it's been given to many, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. In other words, Adam's sin brought condemnation but Jesus, his, his, uh, life, his life of, of living a perfect, sinless life, living, uh, being the spotless Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, him willing to give himself on the cross, it provides justification. In other words, Satan can't hold anything to our account. Amen? You know, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. We studied that a couple weeks ago in Revelation. But can I tell you something? He may try to condemn, but there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. My goodness, sometimes we may feel condemned, right? Because we condemn ourselves. Sometimes other people may feel, make you feel condemned because they try to condemn you. But my Bible still says there's no condemnation. So what shall separate us from the love of God? which is in Christ Jesus, I'm just going to shorten it down. Nothing. Nothing can. In fact, there's a great big list that's given there. I mean, of all these things that people would say can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, but the Bible is clear that nothing can separate you. Once you've come to faith in Christ, once you've been born again by His Spirit, once His blood has been applied to your life, once the transgression has been removed, listen, there is nothing that can pull you away from the love that He has for you. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we've been justified. The price has been paid to set us free. But we've also been made righteous in that, listen, Jesus gives us his righteousness 
But not only that, because he gives us his righteousness, we are able to live in a way that we could not live before. If you try to live for God without having Jesus in your life, you're going to fail. There have been people who recognize that their life was not going the right direction. And so here's the mistake people will make sometimes. They'll say, well, I'm going to start going to church. Well, that's good to start coming to church. But if you only come to church, eventually church may affect you a little bit and make you feel a little better. But you don't receive the message. In fact, let me say this. You can walk into the wrong church and be given the wrong message. Amen. You can walk into a church and them tell you, okay, well, you just be a good person and you just do this and do this and, this, and you just put your name on the roll here and you'll be okay. Listen, that's not going to save you. Amen. You might have to come into church and somebody said, well, just repeat this, but you don't have to believe anything. You don't have to repent. You don't have to turn from sin. Just pray, pray this and believe the ABC and you'll be done. No, listen, we come with a repentant heart toward God. We come not to a church to be saved. We come to a man named Jesus to be saved. It might happen in your church building, but the church cannot save you. The preacher can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. Amen. Only him. Christ and Christ alone. I don't ever want anybody to think that something I did could save them because it can't. All I can do is share you the message of the one who will save you. If you will call upon his name. And I want you to know he'll do it. He will. If you call on the name of Jesus, he will wash away every sin. He will forgive you. And he will empower you to live for God. See, we've been given a righteousness that is not our own. But it's a righteousness that once we receive it, it can be lived out to where our life starts to look different. And people start to go, what in the world has happened to him? What has happened to her? Something is different. Something has changed. Their countenance has changed. They're not reacting to things in the same way that they used to exactly. Now, not that we're going to become perfect suddenly, but all of a sudden you'll notice you don't, things don't affect you in the exact same way they used to. That you, you know, that all of a sudden you have a different mindset. Even the desires of your heart begin to change. Because God begins to make you want things that you think, what? Who want to do that? Who want to come to who want to come to church on Christmas Eve morning when I can sleep in? But you got up and you came. Right? Who 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 would be willing to I, I'll tell you a big one this season. Let somebody go ahead of you in the line at the grocery store. <laughs> Or at Walmart. <laughs> Definitely not going there anytime in the next few days. Or I hadn't been in hadn't been in a while. I'm not going not going in a while. But you can back off and say, hey, why don't you go ahead of me here? I'm not I'm not even if you are in a big hurry, you're not in that big a hurry. That's right. Amen. Amen. You'd be surprised by what just a small act of kindness like that can do in the life of a person. You know one of the things we need to do, guys? We need to slow down a little bit. We seem to be in a hurry all the time. Even when we're not in a hurry, we're in a hurry. Amen. Jesus never got in a hurry. He didn't. Even when Lazarus was going to die, Jesus didn't hurry. He trusted that God was in control. But we hurry from this to that and to listen to it and to see it. And we just constantly, even when we don't have something to do, we find something we got to Maybe we need to slow down a little bit. Be still and understand who God is. To know He is God and you're not. There's only one who is. So He's given us this gift of righteousness that will reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the, by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free, there it is again, free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. He gives us a gift of grace. He gives us a gift of righteousness. He gives us a gift of justification. He gives us a gift of life. 
Listen, Jesus is eternal life. And without him, you don't have eternal life. He is, and I don't mean just life that you're going to live forever, because everybody's going to live forever somewhere. Amen. Either in heaven or heaven. Amen. And you saw me on this, by the way, you're not going to roam the earth as a ghost. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you're, you're headed in one direction or another, right? right. So, Brother Jason, what is it? All this stuff people see at Halloween and, and see, well, there's demonic forces and angelic forces at work. And in fact, the Bible calls the demonic forces familiar spirits. Amen. Guess what? That means they compose as somebody That's right. that they're not. Yep. Right. Well, how would they know certain things? They're spirits. That's right. And they can see the same things that you saw. That's right. You had a conversation with somebody. You never have one totally alone. I can tell you that, but Amen. That's right. God. there's a spiritual world. That's Once right. you figure that out, some of these things that get said start to make sense. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us here that we have the opportunity to receive a free gift that comes from God and God alone. Listen. It is offered. It is free. It listen. It it you couldn't pay the price for your salvation. It is a gift that I don't care if you tried your best to live good the rest of your life, and you you never could get to it. You never could do enough. You never could be enough to ever be good enough to to pay for that gift. Amen. And by the way, if it's a gift, it, it's not. It's given. It's received. Right. If it, it, listen, if salvation was to be earned, it's not a gift. Right? right? right. And it's definitely not a free gift. Jesus comes this morning. It's Christmas. So Christmas Eve, the day before we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And Jesus this morning comes to us not no longer in a manger. Amen. He comes to us no longer facing the, the troubles and things of this world when he walked this earth. He comes to us this morning no longer hung up on a cross. He comes to us this morning no longer buried in a borrowed tomb. He comes to us this morning seated at the right hand of his Father. Yes. Ruling, reigning, yep. preparing yes. to return yes. when the time is right. Yes. But he is also calling. He is calling, O oh sinner, as the old song saying, come home. He's calling to you. He's calling to me. If you're weary and you're heavy late and you're struggling this morning, He's calling you to come to him. If you're here this morning and you're lost in trespasses and sin, you're dead in trespasses and sin. If you're here this morning and, 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 and you need Jesus to come into your life this morning and wash away every sin and forgive you, man, this is, what a moment. What a moment that God would have to bring you here this morning if you're not saved that you could receive the greatest gift of all, which is not something, again, you put under a tree, but from the one who hung upon the tree. This morning, if you don't know Jesus, I, I want to plead for you to open your heart up and receive the free gift of salvation this morning by receiving the person of Jesus Christ who loves you. That babe in that manger, listen, he came for a purpose. And that purpose was to rescue you and rescue me. He came on a rest, the greatest rescue mission that's ever been. He came to deliver us from our sins and set us free. And what you've got to do is open your heart up to him. You've got to repent of your sins, which is to have a different attitude and a turning away from sin. And a faith that Jesus did, in fact, die on the cross. That he did, in fact, raised from the dead, and that he will, in fact, save you. Amen. If you
you will ask him. So let's bow our heads this morning. The musicians come, close our eyes. And you know what's so awesome? We could very well see a Christmas miracle this morning. Because there's no greater miracle than when a person receives Jesus into their life. And Jesus forgives them and washes their past away. And the Holy Spirit comes to indwell them. So as musicians are, are here, listen, if you're here and you've never accepted Christ for real into your life as your Lord and Savior, Now is the moment. Now is the time. If God is speaking to your heart, and He's spoken to your heart any time during this message to say to you, you need this Jesus. You need this forgiveness. You need this gift. And you want to receive it. Listen, then come right now. You can pray with me with a repentant heart. See, you've got to be ready and willing to let God come in and change you. You can't change yourself. But your heart can be at that place where you say, Lord, I understand. I recognize I need, I need to turn from the sin in my life and I need you. And if you're willing to come and ask Him to save you, He is willing to save you the very moment you ask. So right now, if you're here and that's you and you say, I want to be saved. I want this free gift of salvation. I want to know that I'll spend eternity in heaven and I want to have a personal relationship with Jesus in this life and in the next. Then right now, if you come to Him, and you might pray something like this, but in your own words, you say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord, I am sorry for the sin that's in my life. I turn today away from my sin and I repent and I turn to you. Lord, I believe that you lived a perfect sinless life. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe, Lord, that you shed your blood to wash away my sin. I believe you were buried. And Lord Jesus, I believe that you rose from the dead on the third day. Come into my heart. Come into my life and wash away every sin. I receive this moment the free gift of eternal life. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior right now. And Lord, give me the strength. Give me the spirit in which I can live for you from this day forward. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for this free gift and this Christmas miracle that I received this morning. And Lord Jesus, it's in your name I pray. Amen. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here, and you prayed that prayer a minute for the first time. We're going to, in just a moment, we're going to have a time of invitation for people to come and pray for whatever needs they have. But if that was you and you prayed that prayer for the first time, listen, I want to encourage you to just come uh, to me. Just come up to me uh, here as others come to pray. And just come up to me and say, well, Jason, I just prayed to receive Jesus. And I want everybody to know I received my Christmas miracle this morning. I received that free gift today. And I want everybody to know that I've been forgiven, that I've been saved. And I can truly celebrate Christmas this year. If that's you, I want to encourage you as others come to pray for, for various needs, some of which I didn't mention, but you come and you let everybody know I've been saved. I've, I've, I've received the greatest gift of all this morning. The gift of salvation through Jesus. Whatever you need is, won't you come? Father, have your way now in this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Whatever your need may be, this altar is open for you to come.
the Lord have his way this morning. Whatever you may be facing today. Worthy is Get-togethers and 
good meals and fellowship together and gifts and just rejoicing and joy. We're thankful, Lord, that Lord, maybe if Christmas this year doesn't look like we we, we would want it to, God, that, that we can still look to you. We can find hope. We can find peace. We can find joy in the midst of sorrow, God. And so, Lord, we pray for those this morning who, who maybe are mourning the loss of a loved one, those that have dreaded this, this holiday season because there's someone missing at the table. And I pray for you to just minister healing to those folks, God. And God, I pray, Lord, for, for broken relationships and reconciliation, God. And, and Lord, for you just to, to have your way, Lord. For you, Lord, just to intervene, intercede, God, on behalf of those that that are struggling today, God. For those that have and for those who do not have, God, we know, Lord, that you are with us, God. And Father, I pray, especially pray today for the one who doesn't know you. I pray, God, that they would not make it through the Christmas season without coming to know you and what it means to be a child of God. We love and praise you and thank you so much for everything that you do, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. So, we hope you have a Merry Christmas. Jim's got an announcement real quick about Freedom Seed. But also, uh, no service tonight, okay? So today, this morning was the service. And we won't have service Wednesday night. We, we always kind of shut everything down Christmas week. So, so we won't have service Wednesday. We'll be back next Sunday morning. And hope you'll be here. And remember, next Sunday night is our is our New Year's. So, Jen, if you want to make that announcement. So, um, so I started Freedom Seekers for people that, you know, struggle with addiction and different things. And uh, I don't know, God, I just put it on my heart, so I just told Andrea it's been going on and on since I've talked to Freedom Seekers about doing it. I want to do this time in dedication to Caleb Qualls and his wife and uh, just the, the, the change that God made in Caleb's life that we uh, got to experience. And uh, Miss Crystal is going to uh, give Caleb's testimony. And so, I mean, you know, New Year's is about uh, freedom and new beginnings. And uh, I just, I don't know, I just want that night to be dedicated for Caleb. Amen. 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 Good. Amen. 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 It's going to be a good night. Amen. All right. Well, let's bow our heads. Uh, the ushers are at the back if you have to give your tithes and offerings. They're there. And, uh, oh, man. So Larry Van Hooser, would you pray for us, brother, and dismiss us uh, and pray for a wonderful Christmas for everyone.